Next up is the Starry Expanse team. I think this one's, yeah, hey, this one's live. We're going to be testing, and I still can't hear myself. So Today's the uh, sound-themed Mysterium. I don't know, because I can hear myself. Hi. Hello. How's that? Hello. Can we hear me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> My name is Kelly, or Rain. I answer to either. This is Hollister. Hi, I'm Hollister. I am the composer and audio engineer, and I... Just kind of do a bunch of stuff around the team. Mm -hmm. But that's my main role. I, I do lots of stuff. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the project, kind of what we do. If you're kind of unfamiliar with Starry Expanse, then this is a great time to sit down. <laughs> so, what's this one? OK. Oh, hey, look, it's me. <laughs> There's no notes. Sorry, cool. we're just going to run with it. Um, so the Star Expanse project is a group of volunteers that uh, were rebuilding Riven from scratch. Woo! Yay! <laughs> In real time 3D. So it started as kind of a... Um, yeah, there we go. There's our Dark Ages. Um, it started as a kind of a college project between Zib and Philip. Um, and then just kind of slowly grew into a um, bigger college project and has evolved since then. So it, we were first noticed by Cyan in 2014. Um, and then uh, since then we have gained their enthusiasm, if you want to call it that. <laughs> they like us a lot. Let's call it that way. <laughs> and in 2017 we were properly organized and now it's much more professional deal than, it, than just a little... Um, Completed in 20, I didn't even see that one. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, it's a much more uh, organized affair than it has been in years past. And um, uh, we have team members, uh, we have a fabulous team, and we have team members all over the globe. So we have uh, several around the United States, in Europe, various countries all over, and a few that are missing, but I know we have three in Australia, not just two. Um, anyway. Uh, let's see. We have many tools. Uh, so the we're, Unreal Engine is the official engine. So it allows us to really bring the uh, quality of the game up to a really high level of, of s the standard is very high. Words are hard. Let's just, just roll with me, people. <laughs> um, and as far as 3D modeling, we get asked this a lot. What's your, what's your 3D modeling program? Can you give us an FBX file? Because then we don't care. <laughs> so it can be Maya, it can be Modo, 3D Studio Max, Blender, uh, Substance Designer and Substance Painter get used a lot for texturing, but as far as models, we don't, as long as you can give us a model in a specific format, we don't care what you use. Photoshop for texturing. Um, and apparently, okay, lots and lots of coffee. Is that another one? And the tears of our enemies. I mean, the tears of us. <laughs> Angst, apparently, is the right word. Whatever. Um, okay. The Stone Age. The Stone Ages. So we have Zib with dreadlocks. Right? <laughs> so, um, this is kind of the early development days. Um, and it was lovely. We started with, uh, I think we, gosh, what did we start with? Um, Blender, I, I yeah. think we were using Blender yeah. a while. It was, uh, it was an Uru mod. It was an Uru mod. Uh, and then it kind of evolved and eventually changed to Unity. And then um, we changed to <laughs> uh, Unreal. And that's a um, April Fool's joke in the top right corner there. That's the new engine. <laughs> that's the new engine. Um, so these are kind of random screenshots. Okay, I'm not really sure what's going on. This is between 2012 and 2014, or 11 and, oh God. You can tell how prepared I am with this one. Uh, the Renaissance period, so this is the last couple of years when we've able to really, um, these, these textures are some of the real-time textures in Unreal that we can really get that really high quality, fancy standard. And if you've seen our demos in previous years, you'll recognize some of those, uh, uh, some of those screenshots up there. Um, and hopefully, apparently, this is the space age. It's right around the corner. 
meaning things are better, something, I don't. Okay, so in the spirit of this okay. year's theme, it's your turn. Hi, it's my turn now. <laughs> uh, in the spirit of this year's theme, since this year's theme is uh, audio, uh, I'm the audio guy, so I'm doing stuff. Um, we decided that uh, usually we, we present sort of a, a demo of the game where we're at, little section, little sort of vertical slice. Uh, this year we thought we'd do something a little bit different because uh, you can't really do a demo of audio and stuff. So uh, I've prepared, I and a lot of other people on the team, have prepared a video sort of explaining uh, the process of, of what we're doing with the audio and, uh, and the music. So I'll just play that now. Okay, here we go. Hi, my name's Hollister Sterrett. I'm a composer, an audio engineer, and a member of the Starry Expanse project. Starry Expanse is a project uh, dedicated to recreating the classic adventure game Riven, the sequel to Myst, in real-time 3D. I've been a freelance composer for nearly three years now, but I've been involved in music my whole life. Music is something that I've always loved from a really early age, whether it be composing, playing, or singing. I've been passionately doing musical theater for the majority of my life, in which I've really been able to grow as a performer, singer, and musician. I've composed for countless indie games, films, and even stage productions. Music can cut through the dialogue and just tell a story through emotion, and that can be really powerful. I've been a fan of Riven for as long as I can remember, and in my spare time I had written a few covers of my favorite tracks from the game and uploaded them to my SoundCloud. Around mid-2017, someone from the Starry Expanse team found them and liked them so much they asked me to write their vanity logo. The collaboration was so successful they ended up using my first draft that after the logo was presented at the Mysterium convention that year, I officially joined the team as a composer. The Starry Expanse project, to me, is one of the most exciting video game projects out there right now, and one that I've been following long before I joined the team. Riven was an absolute masterpiece, and to have it recreated and exposed to a whole new audience and generation of gamers is really exciting. And for all us OG fans, seeing this immersive world in full 3D will be really cool. For a lot of us, it's a dream come true. Growing up, the Myst games, and specifically Riven, had a huge impact on me artistically, and is what eventually inspired me to start composing. Riven's soundtrack and all of Robin Miller's unique, outside-the-box music is one of my biggest influences and has been my inspiration to try out their sounds and instruments that let me convey really specific moods and emotions. The opportunity to recreate the music that inspired me to start composing is beyond exciting to me. I'm determined to do it justice. The Starry Expanse project is really a unique undertaking because I'm not just writing new music for a game, but rather attempting to recreate the original compositions in as high a quality as I can. This is the musical version of what our art team does with Ribbon's environment and characters, but it comes with difficulties all of its own. Staying true to the original material is something that I don't usually have to worry about, since with a normal gig you get the freedom of deciding what you want to write, how you want it to sound, etc. With this project I've had to get used to making those tough calls between the higher audio quality that modern technology provides and preserving the original feel of the sounds. The project comes with some unique hurdles that most composers don't even have the chance to experience, so I'm really lucky to have the opportunity to strengthen my skill set in such unusual circumstances. Early on in the process, we were forced to make several really tough decisions that would define the direction we took for the rest of the project. One of these was how to recreate Robin's original music, whether we should use the famous synthetic sounds or try to reorchestrate. After much deliberation, we decided the only way to properly and authentically recreate the music is with the original synths that Robin used. 
After a lot of searching, these synths are rare at best, we went and bought these two synthesizers that were used to make all of the music and some of the other sounds, actually, in Ribbon. Which is great, but also comes with the difficulty of finding and matching up all of the sounds used in the songs and how they were configured. The biggest challenge for me as a composer is with one of the synths we purchased, the Yamaha VL1. The VL1 is unique in that it uses what's called physical modeling, which means that instead of using recordings of real instruments, called samples, it actually synthesizes its own instruments, which means it can produce some incredibly intricate sounds. You can hear these little cadences, like the air in a woodwind, a hammer striking a piano string, or a bow scraping on violin strings. You can configure every little aspect of the virtual instrument, adjust physical properties, the amount of growl, breath, throat, all things that in real life you'd have to build a new instrument to change. This all leads to some incredibly strange, otherworldly, but authentic sounds. Robin actually used a breath controller to make these instruments sound even more authentic. This was used for Gen's Marl Ob. As well as some lesser known objects and creatures such as the work sounds. As you can probably imagine, recreating music one to one with something as dynamic as a breath controller is quite a challenge, but after hearing the incredible sounds that these synths make in person, I, I knew this was the way we had to do it. so much to Riven's atmosphere, but what's just as important as the music are the sound effects, which do so much to make the world feel dynamic and alive. Riven has the best sound design of any game I've ever played. The attention to detail is one of the things that really makes it feel like a real place. That's why it's so important that we get them right in our game. To this end, we've decided to utilize binaural audio. In most video games, the audio is stereo, which means that it can only pan left and right, so to put it simply, it takes the location of a sound in 3D space and essentially flattens it to 2D and then figures out where the closest point of the sound is in the left-right pan. Binaural audio, on the other hand, simulates ear canals and a virtual head between the left and right outputs. It actually uses the Unreal Physics engine to simulate the sound waves in real time. That means that not only will audio sound like it's right there in front of, behind, or anywhere around you, it'll also sound different based on the materials it's bouncing off of. 
for example, sound will echo a lot more in a cave than in, say, a, a wooden room. This was a concept I toyed around with when I first joined the team, and since then the tools for working with binaural audio have improved greatly. An immersive adventure game like Riven is the perfect candidate for this kind of emerging technology, and since the original game was such a technical pioneer back in 1997, I, I think it's only fitting that we utilize these cutting-edge audio features in our remake. We get asked a lot about what new things we're planning on adding to the game, what changes from the original have we chosen to make. As a general rule, we don't like to alter the game or make additions without good cause, but with all the new 3D elements we're adding to the game, it's inevitable that we run into some areas where the original game just didn't need sound, but a real-time version would. For example, footsteps. It would be really strange to just be gliding around the world without hearing your own footsteps. This has been a bit of a challenge, since we want to change as little as possible from the original game, but there are some sounds that we feel are really needed to make the transition from 2D to 3D work, and to make our game as immersive as possible. It's important, however, that we're very careful with the sort of additions, since we know that every addition or change we make has the power to alter the intended perception of the game to a new player. Riven is truly a spectacular game both visually and auditorily, and we hope to let you and a whole new generation of gamers dive into and get lost in this beautiful world, giving it well-deserved exposure in the modern day and continuing on its fantastic legacy. So the guy that, uh, that made this PowerPoint decided that it was funny to add this slide where setting me up for any qu so. Nick has a very good sense of humor. He's hilarious. <laughs> so go for it, I'm, I'm here to answer any questions, yes. Most definitely there was. Um, yeah, the decision to go the route that we did was a difficult one um, because obviously it's probably the hardest route to go. Uh, you know, recreating it as authentically as possible was a huge challenge. Um, and yeah, the, the more uh, appealing option would be to either just you know, sort of recreate the, the music as accurately as possible with, with modern uh, patches and modern synths or whatever it may be, or just do our own takes on new songs that are just sort of, you know, fit the same general feeling or mood or emotion. Uh, so, yes, that was definitely, uh, I mean, Jack Wall is a huge influence on me. I love his work. I would love to do that in, a, in some sort of capacity, but, but we decided for this game using the original... Dude, love it. That's awesome. Um, we decided that for this, this is the best way to go. Ah, oh, awesome. Ah, sorry. No? Okay. Oh, wow. Is all of it going to be done via synthesizer, or are you going to need any instruments, physical instruments? Yeah, like if you need an oboe player or something, call me. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, 
that was another thing that we had discussed was how much do we want to, you know, it, in modernizing things, you know, there, most of the patches used in the original songs are not instruments that, you know, have a, an equivalent in the real world. They're all, you know, very sort of unique sounding things. But in the few instances where, you know, it's a cello or it's a, a drum or something, it, we definitely did consider that. Um, but I think because we have the two synths that, uh, you know, have all of the patches used, we're just going to go that route. Um, but, but thank you for the offer. And, um, <laughs> and I, yeah, once again, this is another instance where I would love to do that, but I think for this project it, it doesn't make sense. How are you recreating that? Are you doing it all by ear? Ha. <laughs> Much like the graphics are done by eye, um, with a lot of calculation and sort of, you know, educated guessing, um, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of it is just going to be listening to it and being like, okay, I know what this patch is now. I know that this is what that sounds like. You know, I know these are the settings on it based on, it's just going to be sort of a learning curve, figuring out how he did certain things. Because, you know, there are conventions that he, that he abided by when making the, the soundtrack. Um, so yes, in short, it's by ear, but it, it, there are going to be l several steps that we are going to take to make sure that it's not sloppy, if that makes sense. You know, a lot of just going over it and comparing it to the original, so. But yes, ultimately the process is going to be just by ear. <laughs> there are a few significant uh, audio puzzles in Riven. One in particular is Variant. One is not. Uh, are, are you planning on altering the fire marble puzzle? <laughs> because pretty much everybody has those memorized at this point, so... So it'd be fun to change it up and... So you're going to you change the animal sounds or, <laughs> uh, or just no. try and replicate those? Um, if there are any sounds that can be recreated... I actually, that's a, that's a good question. I haven't really... Um, Right, the bug sound, the work sounds. Um, no, not unless they're sounds that were made with the synths that we have, in which case we will likely try to recreate them. For example, the work sound. Um, that, may, that may be one of the sounds we try to recreate. But no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna totally change them. If, if anything, it would just be a higher quality recreation of the original sound, yeah. <laughs> All right. Why? Uh recreate the sounds and music instead of using the original files? Ah, um, good question. Because much like the graphics, the original sounds, uh, due to technological limica limitations back then, um, are very compressed. And with the whole binaural audio thing we're doing especially, uh, hearing these sounds with you know compression artifacts and just in sort of lower quality than is ideal, it, it really ruins the immersion and it means that we can't really do the, the effects that we want to do. So, um, so yeah, basically to match the updated graphics, we need higher quality sounds as well. Do, can, I, can I do the thing? Okay. Um, is that um, a lot of the scenes with dialogue, the dialogue and the ambience are combined into one clip and we can't really separate that. And so to get that effect, if you're standing in 233 and you're in the cage, right, and Gen is walking around you and he's talking, if you turn your head and he's over here, if we use the original audio clips, he's going to sound like he's over here. It's not going to make a lot of sense. So um, for that full-time, real-time 3D um, effect, both visually and audially, we're going to have to, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why, is that we have to redo the audio because so many different pieces have been combined in that way. So. Um, so, sorry. So, uh, are you I like. Are you considering doing like a, a separate soundtrack file release alongside the game, or just just leaving the files in the game as is? That is something that remains to be seen. Um, I'm not sure that that's up to us. 
based on you know rights. It's Robin's music technically. Uh, if possible, I would love to do that, um, but I can't promise anything right now. This is your fault. <laughs> Since you mentioned the conversation with Gen in the cage. Oh man. What are you going to do about actor audio? Right. Yes. The big question. Uh, that still remains to be seen. Uh, right now we're looking into ways to isolate the audio, uh, isolate the, the, the dialogue. Um, <laughs> that is uh, still a bit of an unknown because, because yeah, it, the, there, we have some ideas. There are some things I'm going to try to do and it's not, it's not hopeless by any means. We have avenues we can pursue. Um, Yes, no, absolutely. Uh, right. Um, I think last, uh, hiring new talent would just be an absolute last resort. That's not, you know, we're going to do everything we can to avoid that because that's a huge undertaking. Um, so, yeah, I think as of now, we're just going to try to isolate and remaster the original dialogue. Is there any particular track or sound effect that you expect to be especially challenging or difficult to recreate? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, the, mm. <laughs> there, there are a lot of tracks in the soundtrack that get very intricate. For example, the um, the fissure theme, the very last theme in the game, spoiler alert, you fall in the fissure at the end, and sorry, hey, I warned you. Um, and there's a song that plays, and it's the mo you know, it's the finale of the, of the game, so it's all these intricate sounds mashed together. I'll gesture with one hand, sorry. It's all these, it's these intricate sounds, um, and my whole job is isolating those sounds in my head. So, that's gonna be hard to do, uh, but I think, I think I'm gonna save the more intricate tracks for later once I've gotten a hang of the conventions and what each patch sounds like, because you know they're the easier ones I can start with, get a sense of that, and I'll know uh, for the harder ones what those sound like. Is there a reason you're not using the, uh, the soundtrack from the CD, which is in pretty high quality still? Um, yes, it, well, you'll be interested to know that the ones on the CD are actually significantly different from a lot of the tracks in game. Um, not in terms of quality, but in terms of actual instrumentation, and there's a lot of tracks in the game that aren't in the soundtrack. Uh, you know, a, a, a huge amount, actually. Um, so there's that, and if we're going to have to recreate some of them, we might as well do all. Um, and the final product that we can create with these synths and modern technology is actually still a lot higher quality than even the CD version. So with all of the, uh, with all the music, you're obviously trying to recreate exactly as it was originally, but with Foley and other sound effects, uh, of course there are some things that are challenging, but have there been any sound effects that are just really fun to find creative ways to remake them? Yeah, so with the sound effects, I, it's, it's, very, it's a similar situation to the dialogue. We're gonna do everything we can to just remaster the original sounds and try to get them to a place where we can just use those and it won't be off-putting. Um, but like I said in the video, there's some cases where Riven didn't have sounds, like the footsteps and stuff. Uh, and yes, yeah, so... <sighs> Um, oh my god. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, th there are some things that uh, either we're going to make our own Foley and that would be a lot of fun, um, or go the more boring route and get some, you know, find assets online that we can buy to, th that, you know, perfectly sound like the, the, the material that you're walking on. Because that's the challenge with this game, is you walk everywhere on every sort of material imaginable. So, 
unless we want it to sound dumb, we have to have a footstep material for every single type of material, or at least generic types, right? Metal, wood, gravel, dirt. <laughs> you walk on what? Yeah, okay. Um, so, I like to do Foley. Uh, it's still something we're exploring doing, um, and that would be fun, but I don't know. We may end up just buying assets for that. Um, you did mention that Cyan had officially noticed you and, and given you some degree of support. Was yep. there any possibility of getting master recordings of the original optimum quality, or was that just never a possibility for Riven or even Exile or Revelation, anything else like that? Yeah, not really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. It's, yeah. I know. That would be that would be lovely, but yeah. <laughs> They're good questions. Right. Okay. With. Uh, redoing Riven in 3D where you can go off the beaten path to areas you couldn't access before. Is, is there any possibility of writing any new pieces, even small new pieces for new areas, but in the theme of Robin Miller's music? Uh, yes. Um, that, is, th that is most definitely uh, something that, you know, we, I have to make sure I'm in the okay to do that. Uh, you know, legally and otherwise, um, but that is most definitely something that I intend to do if possible. Um, there are, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, in short, yes. <laughs> yeah, the East Path theme. I uh, feel this must have been asked before at some previous year, but what are you guys gonna do about voice acting? You want to take that one? So we've been kind of uh, con considering a couple of different options, just like with the music of trying to use the original uh, voices, trying to remaster the original dialogue. We have to, if that's possible, we don't even know if it's possible yet because we have to separate that in the audio file because it's combined with ambience, it's combined with music. There's a lot going on. And then it was compressed. And Foley. And Foley you know, yeah. then, then all that was compressed. So trying to separate that out and use it, we're not sure if that's even possible yet. So that's what we're going to try. Um, if that's not possible, then we've considered hiring new talent to actually re voice the parts because we are going to have, we're not doing the, uh, what is it, an end of ages routine of having, uh, <laughs> characters are going to be 3D modeled. <laughs> so in case anyone's wondering, characters will be 3D modeled and then uh, animated to best match the audio. Um, so how the audio is going to happen, that's still in question, but in the meantime, we're still making the uh, character models. So does that, that help? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> No other questions? We could talk about this all day. <laughs> Tannis. Uh, in the case of Sheila Gould, and I think John Keston's even still alive, have you considered rehiring old talent? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, of course, if they did it, but like, uh, I mean. <laughs> Well, okay, there's, yes, we've, I, think, I think it's been discussed, but it's also been 20 years. Yeah. Your voice change in, changes in 20 years, so like, even if they were to re-record re their own performance, it's gonna sound drastically different. It's gonna be like, that's John Keston, really? I mean, like, you know, no offense to John Keston, but like, the performances were amazing, and it might be better to, uh, rather than try and rehire the original talent from 20 years ago, it would be better, in my opinion, this is my personal opinion, to find new talent and get a more modern take on it. I concur. Yeah. Just on the more personal, uh, 
note, you alluded to this in the video, but it must be very different as a composer to as a composer of your own original work to have to focus entirely on specifically emulating someone else's work could you speak to that a little bit more oh man yeah it is a totally different beast doing something like this um yeah like you said i mentioned it in the video that it's it's a very unique uh, position to be in not you know most composers aren't in charge of recreating another composer's work. Um, I, I believe, again, it's very similar to what the 3D artists are doing because, you know, they all have their own style too, but they all have to match this one uniform art style that, you know, the, 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 the uh, original developers followed, right? So um, it, it is cool to... to it's, yeah, it's, very, it's a very unique experience, and it's, and it's cool to, it's a good uh, uh, exercise in my skill uh, to, um, I lost my train of thought like three times, I think, in that sentence. I'm going to start over with that, that sentence. It's good practice. It's a good test of my skill to be able to, uh, have to be forced to go and emulate someone else's uh, uh, style because it's very different from my own. So, right, I, it's going outside my comfort zone, trying new things that I wouldn't try naturally on my own because, you know, this is what he decided to do in this case. And Robin's a very unconventional composer. Um, he, he just, he's great. He just kind of does, he's like, I want it to sound like this. And he just, he like, his main thing, by the way, is taking a patch and just bringing it down two octaves. That's what he does, and he makes these crazy sounds, but no one does that. It's crazy itself. So, that's like most of the Mist soundtrack. I'm on a tangent, but I think it's interesting. Anyway, yes, it is, it is interesting to, to, to do that. This is only semi-related, but I just looked up to see if John Keston was still alive. <laughs> uh -oh. And he's 92. And he runs three to four miles four times a week. <laughs> Just so y'all know. Yeah. That's right. I, I remember about that. Yeah. Hi there. Just a quick question from the, from the cheap seats over here. Hi there. There you are. Hi. Uh, Sorry, I just I, I missed a little bit at the beginning. So no uh, worries. I, I'm just going to mention I'm, uh, I'm Philip and I'm making a documentary and I'm showing some yes, samples. Yes, love your work. Tomorrow, and we have, I have a, I'll Can't be wait. showing a tiny bit uh, among the little interview clips. There's a, a little bit of uh, Robin talking about music. Um, oh, not, awesome. Not really in, in great depth. I mean, we have that more in the, in the film, but you get a little flavor of it, which is kind of fun. Um, but I wanted to ask, is, as you uh, play, as you've gotten so deep into the music and the game itself, have you discovered things that like you that you only would recognize by going through it at that with that intensity uh, yes definitely um, well something that uh, a lot of at least good composers do is uh, they will take little sections of music right and they'll and they'll, they'll write them for specific feelings or characters Right, they're the motifs, um, and Riven actually does that. Mist did that a little bit, but 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 Riven really starts focusing on that, and it's a lot more subtle in Riven. So yeah, I've noticed. Um, here's a good example: uh, in the cage uh, monologue, where Gen is walking around you and he's giving his huge big monologue. Um, there's a song that's there's underscoring for that entire speech, and you're kind of just trying to figure out, you know, who he is, right? You don't know really what his deal is. So there's just kind of like the sort of neutral music playing. But once he starts talking about like the bad stuff where he's like, you're like, oh, I don't know if this guy's cool or not, uh, his theme starts playing, right? And it's that, it's that thing I was playing on the piano, that, that sort of low bell, like da da da. Um, and then slowly throughout the game, you'll hear that theme 
play whenever something bad happens. All the bad endings have that theme, even if it's not directly related again. It's just that sort of theme that's associated with, with the antagonist. Um, Atris has one, Catherine has one. Um, so yeah, in all the tracks, the more you listen to them, the more you discover little, uh, little nuances that you wouldn't hear otherwise, but sort of are just subconscious when you play the game. That's the cool part, is you don't notice them, but you just sort of feel that way, and you're like, oh, this feels like that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Um, in the behind-the-scenes interview on the original Mist and Miss Masterpiece, Robin discussed how originally they weren't going to do music, and when they first experimented with it, they found it, it worked for its scene enhancement. I specifically remember him saying it, the, it was good, it worked, and it didn't sound like Super Mario Brothers. Is there any chance you could drop a reference to World 1-1 in the Starry Expanse project <laughs> so that it actually would sound like Super Mario Brothers? Can I have this one? Uh, I will add that to the Easter egg list. <laughs> Along with the orange cones that fly out of the fissure at the end of the game. <laughs> exactly. We'll call it Super Miller Brothers. <laughs> it's going to happen. Well, we've had a lot of questions today in regards to the new audio that we're going to be having with this. Mm -hmm. My question is, is do we have any clip examples of any of the new music with the Starry Expanse project with the 3D audio? Or, excuse me, 3D video. No. <laughs> um, the, the closest thing that I have to that uh, that was ready to present is at the very end of the video. There's the cyan intro, and you could see you could see it matched up with that intro. I have that full video somewhere, but uh, but stay tuned for that. I mean, at some point we will be yeah. sharing more of that on the site and in the Discord plug. Um, We're not there yet. Shh. What? It's never too early to, to plug the Discord. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. Correct. Separate. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hi. Uh, obviously, you spent a lot of time reconfiguring your synth to sound like Robin's synth. Are you going to release like your settings or maybe a sound font so other people <laughs> can <laughs> mess with the stuff on their own? I love that idea. OK, so uh, with how much I've been struggling to, <laughs> to figure out all these settings, I can sympathize with anyone trying to do that in the future. So. Uh, if that is a possibility, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Come on, I know you all have questions. <laughs> questions are questions. Uh -huh. For proper tuning, middle C or A440? Oh. Oh. Ooh! <laughs> Put me on the spot there, man. <laughs> I'm gonna alienate like half the fan base now, or what'd I say? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say middle C because, because, because of Robin. Ooh, oh, pass it on to Robin. See, yeah, I'm passing it on to him, so, so blame him, not me. Last chance. Going once. Going once. Do we have any? Do we have any online questions? Not. No. Okay. <laughs> yes. Going once. Going twice. Okay. So credits. Uh, the names in red are folks who have joined us this year. So the team has kind of exploded. Yes. Yes. Mad props. It's been, it's been cool nuts. Yeah. Um, and then other folks and when they joined. <laughs> we have a great team. It's, it's absolutely fabulous. I'm sorry? Uh, yeah. We miss him. We love him. But yeah, he's kind of. So um, if you have insight and you want to join the lovely little collection of 
artists and developers and stuff, send us an email with your credentials and things. Oh, and one more thing. It's official. <laughs> yep, it's official. We're doing we're doing VR. It's gonna happen. So that was a little bit behind the scenes, and that was his his remake of. Yeah, uh, I know this is not at all what you care about right now. <laughs> but fun fact: that was the track that was what they heard that they asked me to join because of that track I made mm -hmm. like three years ago. Yep. So anyway. One more slide. Yeah, one one more slide. One more slide. One more slide. It, it's the thing. Don't rush me. Sorry. <laughs> no, not that one. We already did the announcement. <laughs> okay. This is officially the last slide. I promise. Uh, <laughs> we have a website. We post stuff on there. Um, that's kind of the uh, one way to keep up to date with some of the stuff that we're working on. We also have a new Discord server. It is completely separate from the official Mysterium Discord. Um, so that's where we're posting our most up to date stuff. Developers are on there, artists are on there. They're gonna be available now here if you have questions and you're like, oh my gosh, how do, how do you do this? And neither one of us can answer. Hop on Discord and ask, because they're like, we're, we're here, they just couldn't make it to Mysterium. So, yeah, um, yeah if you, if, uh, pretty much the majority of the teams on there, um, and they're all assigned uh, their individual roles, and there's a Q&A channel, so yeah. you can ping a specific role with a question you have. Um, you can, you know, we post things, like you said, about, you know, development even before we make a blog post about it, so if you're super into, you know, seeing what we're working on, there's yeah. always new stuff in there, there's a pretty good community. Um, it's my Discord, I'm a bit biased, but uh, <laughs> if you have problems with it, come to me, yell at me. Yep. Um, no, so it's, it's good. Join. And that's all she wrote. <laughs>